The Square Ball Podcast. Welcome to the show. Brought to you with Levi Solicitors. Good, aren't they? Very good. Yeah. Very good. And particularly good if you can get 10% off. Yeah. If only such a thing were possible. Yeah. 10% discount on your legal fees. LeviSolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Useful in all sorts of walks of life, like moving house. Business disputes. Yes. Yeah. Good for that, it turns out. Yeah, if your business has lost like loads of money. <laughs> no, of any. <laughs> More about that in weeks to come. Um, in the meantime, TSB Plus is our members package where you get our entire back catalogue of magazines since 2009. Digital versions, uh, dedicated podcast feed, ad-free, all sorts of perks. Um, the extra ball as well, bonus podcasts if you like these. There's plenty more over there, including actually the tale this week of Rob's journey over to go try and find Pablo, which you may have read about on the blog, but you get to see his face, his your little emotional face. Yeah, the, the restraining order isn't in place in Spain, so it was all right. Excellent. Um, you can get details of that at the squareball.net forward slash plus. Part one of the show then, this is where we delve through the latest Leeds news. And um, I realised in, in all the sort of match coverage when we spoke about uh, the Crystal Palace game. We didn't really touch on the incident, the plane incident, um, with it landing back at, at Leeds Bradford Airport. We all know, obviously, everything was fine, um, but you would shit your pants if you were on board a flight and you smelt burning. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't you? I mean, that's... When we spoke to uh, Bryn about it, it didn't sound fun. No. Uh, Bryn was on board the flight. Was it 1998? It was the yeah. flight back from London after the, was it the West Ham game? Because George Graham wasn't on it, was it? He was hanging he... around in London with his London friends. He yeah. was. And... Um... David O'Leary injured his shoulder because he was trying to open a emergency exit door the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> no, David, the other way. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we laugh about that, but when Bryn's told us that story, um, which I think that's over on the Extra Ball feed, isn't it, when he told us From about... About, about eight, three years ago. <laughs> ages ago. But it is pretty terrifying and it does take you right to the heart of what it must have been like to be on there. Sort of darkness descends and alarms going off. Mm. And, no, not for me. I mean, and Leeds Bradford Airport is a terrifying airport at the best of times, isn't it? If you've ever landed there, it's always you very wanna, wobbly. It's the, high, it's the highest like international airport in the country, isn't it? Um, and it's so it's like I think it used to be former RAF base or whatever back during the war, but then they just kept it on for civilian means. But it's at the top of a hill. Moscow still calls it Yeedon. It is, airport, well, it is it? Yeedon Aerodrome. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he still calls Manchester Airport ringways. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it is at the top of a hill, and it gets absolutely horrific side winds, which you would think would obviously. Um, exclude it from being a good spot for an airport but no <laughs> <laughs> it's the best we can do in Yorkshire have, have you ever I, I once was, I was on a I think it was a Ryanair flight back from Dublin and I genuinely thought I was going to die it was that bad the landing. bad hangover yes but also the, the wings were kind of going like that mm -hmm. which is me doing big tilts and I thought surely that wing is going to hit the ground when we land because we were listening side mm. to side so much which is that wasn't fun and everybody did applaud you know people applaud on flights these days when it, when it lands successfully um, it's the only occasion I, where I, I will thought, say I never applaud no 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 I, nor do I and I sit there in silent scorn of everybody who does I think well, you've, you've not killed us you've not done your job brilliant well done but on that occasion people applauded I didn't join in but I thought yeah you're fine you're fine doing that <laughs> I was on a flight in um, in Peru it was like an internal have you been to South America I have, yeah. oh, a little um, a little internal flight and when the plane landed it played the little Ryanair thing and I thought they've got a Ryanair cast off that's absolutely brilliant <laughs> I'm, I'm hugely reassured by this really yeah so they were obviously re it, they had none of the branding on it anymore. But yeah, for some reason, the little it was obviously some button that the pilot had to press to as like the we have landed button. Yeah, and it played a little uh, played a little Ryanair. The, tune, the which was, is that what is that, which definitely have that. Any pilots do get in touch. Press the button. Is there a we've, we've it, landed button? It was actually uh, Nobby Solano playing a little trumpet <laughs> like in this. <laughs> See, that would have been lovely. Um, been lovely. Speaking of planes, by the way, could you um, do you want to do? Should we should we see if we can upset some scousers? Uh, how? Oh, I mean, they're upset at most things anyway, aren't they? But... <laughs> they're, they're a volatile bunch of the Scousers. They don't do anything that will properly upset them. Well, I, I, can you just... Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll qualify and I'll explain it afterwards, but put on your best Scouse accent, and I've, I've, I haven't explained what this is about. I just want you to read... Where's the, it come from? ...those couple of paragraphs. This is the Liverpool website. Their own website, the official one. Yeah, yeah. Sustainability. It's a word we hear mentioned a lot. I think that was a bit off. Never mind. Most people think it's just about the environment, and while that's definitely a big part of it, it's actually about our society as a whole and how we can all act in a way that will protect the Scouse future. The you, Red you, way, you added the word Scouse, I didn't did you? you? The Red Way is how we're making a positive difference to sustainability. The, by red, the red Way. By focusing on our people, our communities and our planet and using our voice for good to help the next generation of Reds. Sustainability isn't just about the big things. It's about making the little changes and adjustments to our daily lives that, over time, have the greatest impact a sustainable future is our greatest goal 
This is the Liverpool way of doing things. This is this is the red way, a special way, a very <laughs> special way of saving the planet. So Liverpool. No one else has thought of it. <laughs> We're the first people to have a recycling bin. You're paraphrasing <laughs> a little bit now, aren't you? Yeah. What actually is it? Um, this is off their website. This is their sustainability policy. And it's not just a sustainability policy. It's the red way. They've flown to Rangers. They've flown to Glasgow, by the way, um, <laughs> to be met 200 miles away, to be met mm. by their coach, which has driven up um, at the airport. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so there's that. Uh, what, what and, and I know, and I, they've said they're going to do What are they doing? What do you mean? Well, they said they've got all this this red way. What is the red well, way? Well, they actually, they, they do a lot of carbon offsetting and stuff like that and plant. Now, that's not really green, though, is it, carbon offsetting? But they're planting a load of trees is what they're saying. They're, they're saying they're carbon neutral. That's what people do when they can't be asked doing other stuff is offsetting. You right. just go, oh, I'll pay for someone in fucking Brazil to plant some trees, and that means we can fly to Glasgow. Well, about, about I think, 20 people on a flight to Glasgow is about seven and a half tonnes of... Um, Carbon dioxide. I worked it out on one of those online calculator things that you can mm. do. Well, it is a lot of, lot of carbon fairness, to offset. It is three and a half hours on a train from, mm. which is from Liverpool. So they, they can't be expected to go on a train for three and a half hours, can no, they? No, no, absolutely not. We uh, obviously did fly to. I was just about to say we have Alice. just been talking about flying no, back. I, I mean, and, and this, is, this is why I kind of I, I was in two minds about doing this because I didn't want to alert because the Liverpool fans on the internet are mad, um, but. Uh, everyone does it. I know they all do it, I, mm. but I don't know if everybody does it to this extent on the website, <laughs> like trying to paint it as something special when everyone's kind of, everyone's doing it. Forest Green Rovers are green. They are. They are yeah. properly green because they do, they actually have like electric buses and stuff, but they can only do short trips on it. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got, they're building a wooden stadium and stuff, aren't they? Which sounds like a death trap, but apparently not. Mm. They also appointed Dave Hockaday though, so. That is, know. that is true. Yeah. Um, back to the actual football then. Um, and should we well where should we start 21s because they've been doing well yeah quite fun aren't they 21s I support them more than the, the, uh, <laughs> more the first team if I, if I, if I think about it because <laughs> they seem to score goals and, and have fun matches rather than, rather than the first team that's just drudgery at the moment I mean speaking of Liverpool there is a and it just returns back to a theme we've been speaking about this week on the various shows about like fans were all everyone in the Premier League barring probably Man City is unhappy on some level or another mm. maybe Arsenal are quite pleased at the minute but obviously they'll be very disappointed after we beat them at the weekend and um, we'll do the preview for that in, in part two of this show uh, but everybody everybody always thinks they should be the level above where they currently are and therefore everyone ends up unhappy and I was chatting I was chatting to um, Phil about it this morning because he pointed me in the direction of a Liverpool fans you know it's, you know Tony Evans the journalist who, mm. who tends to cover Liverpool saying that FSG have actually the 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 Americans there have actually done a pretty reasonable job, all things considered. And and I think he's, the, the subtext is you're not happy because you're not Man City, but you still won't want Man City's owners as owners because I can't think of a club that would kick off more um, than Liverpool if they got, like, you know, sort of sports washing owners. Oh, so, you know, I think a lot of them would be all right. No, I think it? the internet lot would be. Mm. I think the, the hardcore old school fans would hate it. Yeah, it's probably true. It's shit, though. Isn't which, it? which you could say of any club, by the way. You could. It? The way to solve it would be to just kick out the sports washing type people, mm. not let them buy clubs in the first place. But they're in now, aren't they? So everyone has to try and compete with them. Yeah, it's shit. <laughs> <laughs> so we just watch watch the kids instead. Which but is at least which is Liverpool fun. are saving polar bears. Absolutely, so um, that's good. But it is fun, isn't it? I think you know we go back to the time of Bielsa. And one of the things we kind of we hit upon when he went was that that whole period we we felt very joyful, like we were kids again enjoying football in that same way that we did as kids just for the sake of it being a load of fun mm. to watch I think that taps into what the 21s are doing here as well they're just dead fun well I watched the did you watch the game at Tranmere in the in the Papa John's as the five, well the 5-3 yeah it was a great laugh it was fun wasn't it because <laughs> they we, we were shit at defending and then we just looked like we'd score every time we went forward it was great I think having a uh, front six of when you're holding midfielders as Sam Greenwood who's a striker <laughs> yeah. and Darko JB who is very good on the ball um, and then you've got Sonny Perkins, Joffy Gelhar, Willie Nyonto and yeah. Matteo Joseph. It was like Kevin Keegan's entertainers <laughs> on Red Bull, basically. I mean, with the, the um, to use the word, your favourite word, with the caveat that Tramia are a League Two side and we did have an actual Italy international <laughs> playing up front, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit unfair, but I like battering teams. It, must, <laughs> it made me think what, Watching Man City must be like, yeah. Well, you just look loads better than them for quite a bit of the game. Well, they're just like the Harlem Globetrotters of football now, aren't they? Mm. They're so, like so far ahead. But yeah, I really like him. Um, I didn't. Was it? Were we not allowed to watch this Sunderland game? Actually, it wasn't on, was it? Because of Monday Night Football. Because of the it? thrill of um, Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest. Wow, 
I mean, so many people would have would have tuned into this rather than that, wouldn't they? It's, uh, it made a big impact on the viewing figures. Have you seen that the AFL today actually have uh, they're on about taking out the um, when they renegotiate the new TV deal, taking out the three PM blackout potentially. Oh mm. really? Yeah. Which, if you're not familiar with that, if you're not in the UK, um, there's no football allowed to be showed during the three to five slot on a Saturday. Isn't it's it? kind of stupid because it just means that every game gets moved. So rather than it, they go, oh, you can't watch it if it's a three. Not on telly. If it's at half five on telly, if it's half twelve, whatever, any of the new slots, quarter to eight on a Saturday night, that's all fine. Yeah. But three o'clock for some reason is well, they sacred, they, even though they move every other fixture. But for they, they don't want people to watch a game on TV there rather than going to. But, but none the of the stadium. game. But in the Premier League, none of the games are at three anyway because they've all been moved, moved for TV. So, <laughs> you're but, not, but, so you're not stopping anyone watching anything. And even then. In this day and age, everyone can stream every game anyway because all matches in the Premier League are broadcast level matches for the for the international market, aren't they? It's yeah. stupid. We I mean, thankfully we never watch any of the three o'clock kickoffs. No. We just yeah. we just watch on the radio, don't we? Watch teletext. Yeah. <laughs> we just wait for the page wait for page three oh three to come round. If you are under a certain age, you won't ever have um, known the excitement of like watching on teletext. It's a bit like watching it on Twitter now. <laughs> but without the instant update, without because, any detail, yeah, because the the scores would just be cycling on a page like there'd be three pages of scores because the text was so big and blocky, and you know if you're on page if you're playing West Ham away, you're going to be at the bottom, aren't you? Mm. There on the third page, so you're just waiting for it to cycle round every sort of twenty seconds for each page, wasn't it? And then one day at the time, it'd say Rod Wallace, thirty three minutes, and you'd yeah. go get in. <laughs> Great, it's such exciting times to watch. I did, yeah. I discovered we'd signed Lee Sharp on teletext. <laughs> Yeah. Look, I'm just looking at this weekend's fixtures. Do you know how many three o'clock Saturday games there are? One, two. 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 So there are two. No, and there are. We sounded like roadies then, didn't we? One, there, are, two. <laughs> there are four Sunday two o'clock games. So yeah. maybe Sunday two o'clock should be the blackout. Right. If that's when more of the games are, doesn't that. Isn't that. Is Sunday two o'clock the new the reason, Saturday so, three o'clock? <laughs> the reason why they'll end up. Um, they'll just televise Saturday three o'clock's in the end. Money. And also, and it's stupid. So I kind of think it's stupid not because you can watch them anyway yeah and people do if you've got even the, the smallest level of determination you can watch any game at 3 o'clock but not the under 21s but not the under 21s <laughs> no there was no one um, I guess I guess the actual streaming from the stadium is a, is a problem there because it wasn't it wasn't being broadcast in um, America or anything was it that one but mm. we do keep winning which is good yeah what was it it was 1-0 wasn't it and Nonto got that uh, that goal at the it was the near post, wasn't it? It's the um, the first game Sonny Perkins has played all season without scoring, so I think we should get rid of him. Absolutely, Rubbish. shot. He's, he's he's over the hill now. Just looking at the side, so yeah, it's a bloody strong side, is that, isn't it? I really, I have to say, I really like bits I've seen of them this year. I think um, JB looks great. I can't wait to see him in an actual game because he just he just looks like he can do every midfield thing really well. Like he's dead good at tackling. He can run with the ball. He can find passes. He's just really composed. Who's the lad who went to Southampton? Is it um, Lavia, Romeo Lavia, yeah. who mm. was also a central midfielder from Man City, mm. but went for like ten million rather than five? And he's been playing, hasn't he? So I've kind of in my mind, I've got he's dead good. So I hope JB's exactly the same. Isn't he the guy that Chelsea reportedly bid about fifty million quid for about two weeks later? Yeah. Was that when Bowley went through his his phase of being the mm. sporting director? They'd watched him play like three games for Southampton and went. Sign, sign this guy <laughs> sign this guy yeah the Papa John's as well that was good fun um, so maybe we just need to put all the 21s in for a bit to reignite the fun maybe so maybe so I mean to win the, the Papa John's would be quite funny it, yeah I did write for the blog last week about how um, can we go to Wembley we send in Joffy to play in the Papa John's to sort of right the wrongs mm. of our time in League One when we never got to win it can, we, got, can we go to Wembley is it, is it at Wembley it will be yeah Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> and I mean, we might get, I think in the group stages, the games are all away. But if you, if we can get through the group stages, you'll get games at Ellen Road as well. Oh, we, so it might, we might, we probably would actually sell out Ellen Road for, we would as well, won't uh, we? For a Papa John's game, which would be, that'd be mad. amazing. Given when we were in it, there were about 8,000 people there. <laughs> and we hated every minute of it. But that was the Johnston's Paint Trophy. It was a different time. That's that true. was the JPT, not the PJT. Yeah. Because everyone likes pizzas, don't they? Yeah. Tastes paint. much better than paint. Paint. Yeah. Have you ever eaten paint? Um, probably have at some point mm. not on purpose just out of boredom <laughs> <laughs> just the, shades of, it's Ralph Wiggum isn't it who, uh, <laughs> the thing, um, just the lead I've le got paint in my mouth eating the lead paint off the skirting boards <laughs> uh, uh, as for the first team not getting Cody Hackpo are we that, I'm really surprised 
He's uh, too expensive, but probably, the, the, probably too good. The mirror said we were getting him. Mm. It and was then, good how this changed day by day, wasn't it? It wasn't <laughs> the story that we'd agreed personal terms. This mm. was the mirror story was that we'd agreed personal terms, but we still needed to agree a fee. And mm. then David Ornstein in The Athletic reported the following day, we were close to agreeing a fee, but Gakpo really doesn't care <laughs> and doesn't want to join us. I mean, it might be that we've agreed a fee and have got terms that he would accept, but he goes, yeah, but not there. He's, he's, pay, he's placed us firmly in the friend zone here, hasn't he? We've had eyes for him for a while. Yeah. He's like, nah, I really I really like you as a friend. And, yeah. and that's obviously devastating. Um, I'd like us to just sign a left back in the January window, or ever ever at some point. I was going to say in the uh, the joy of the under-21s is that as fun as they are going forward and scoring lots of goals, um, Monday night in the win over Sunderland, uh, was still another opportunity to just think, why do we not have a left back? Um, and, the, and the person playing left back went off injured, didn't he? It was Sutcliffe. He did, it? yeah. So Harvey Sutcliffe has played there the last couple of games. He's a right back. Um, he follows on from Keenan Carroll, who's a winger, and Alfie McCallum, who's a midfielder. Um, and then Harvey Sutcliffe got injured. He played very well, actually. Um, and then on came Charlie Allen, who's a striker, I think, or an attacking yeah, midfielder, midfielder anyway. Attacking midfielder, isn't he, generally for the under-21s? Um, and he did quite well for that last 10 minutes, up against a winger that Scum have hilariously paid uh, up to £37 million for, and is now on loan at Sunderland, playing in their under-21s. Wow. Uh, which is very good. Yeah, a guy called Ahmad Diallo, who is... Oh, right, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's, the name, yeah. Yeah. he's an Ivory Coast international. He's gone on loan to Sunderland, and Tony Mowbray has says, well, he needs to learn how to play competitive football. So he's now playing for their under-21s against <laughs> ours and getting dominated by uh, two players playing out of position, which I is hope, good. I hope they have to pay all £37 million regardless. <laughs> And the Glazers reward themselves by taking another uh, dividend from that club. They've earned <laughs> they it. Deserve it. They, they do deserve they've, it. They've done great work, haven't they? Great work. Green and gold until we are sold. Um, from the 21s to uh, the women, uh, 5-0 against Chorley. They're top of the league. That is good. Objectively good. That is good. There are Barnsley and Newcastle are both within touching distance with a game in hand. So... Could be could be useless rubbish, but it is only it's only one promotion place from this league, isn't it? It um, is the North Division. Um, slight hiccup in that Laura Bartup, who has been scoring a lot of goals for the women, has now left to join Hull City. Um, Traitor. Yeah, I mean, you, you say that. <laughs> we gather it's down to just personal circumstance and commutes and training. Hating Leeds United, training and stuff like that. <laughs> no, it's not. No. Um, so good luck to her, but you better stop scoring now because um, mm. they're in the same division. Aren't well, they? Hull. Are, I mean, Hull are six. Pathetic. Out of a division of 12, that is, we should say, because that would be pushing for Europe if it was the Premier League. Yeah. But, uh, but not. Um, any other high points to, to note from the last week? Have we skirted around all the first team stuff as much as we can? <laughs> yeah. I suppose that's it, isn't it? Not much sackings. Oh, We've had some sackings, haven't we? Well, Carlos Corbran, actually, yeah. He's second favourite for the West Brom job. But is he, is he holding out for the Leeds job? <laughs> Possibly. I, don't know. I can see your, your doom uh, scenario is just starting to unfold in your head, isn't it? Mm. I can no, tell it's it is. Un, it's unfolded. Have you seen who else is Weeks supposedly ago. in the running for that West Brom job? Mm, Where not really. Chris Wilder's another one who's just mm. been sacked. I think Gary Rowett's another one who could be just about to get sacked. And God, then I think, the, cha- the championship's an awful place. I think Roy Keane might be the bookies' favourite. I think Roy Keane has dismissed it, I think. Oh, has he? I think he, said, I think he said there was absolutely no truth in it or something like and that. And then um, Middlesbrough are on about hiring Lee Catamol as manager, <laughs> which would be interesting. Did they point? not learn from appointing Woodgate? Uh, evidently not, because the one Steve Agnew was his number two, who did a horrendous job as uh, the caretaker manager there as well. And they tried to hire... Michael Carrick, who's another person who's not a manager. Yeah, I mean, um, the more every name that you would add to the pile here just makes me grateful to not be in that division think, anymore. As much as we're hating the Premier League, I think Michael Carrick's just he's kind of the next on the list after the goal. We've got Gerard and Lampard out. Like, mm. Owen Hargreaves <laughs> is he about Carrick? Jermaine Genus, he's busy, <laughs> yeah. isn't he? <laughs> just get some, just get someone out of the nineties to two thousand to, to managers. There you go, part one done and dusted. Then stick about for the preview for Arsenal. That's on the way, and we'll pick heroes and villains as well. The Square Ball Podcast. 